Hello everyone, this is Val Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In today's update, we're gonna be talking about an upcoming bomb cyclone this week. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel and definitely share with your friends on social media. They're gonna be impacted from this storm. All right, so let's get started. So if you were with me yesterday, we talked about a massive storm brewing we put out a video and there was going to be a developing low pressure system off the California coast. And this is now the latest surface map for uh, Tuesday morning. This is the latest 6Z run, which would you take back six hours. That puts you at midnight on Tuesday morning. So essentially what's going to happen this week, we've got this developing low pressure system, but we also have another uh, low pressure system uh, up north. And these two are essentially going to merge later on in the week. This is going to tra tra traverse on, for the Deep South, dumping a lot of heavy rain into the Deep South of Texas, uh, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, and Alabama, into Georgia. And eventually, by starting th this weekend, late Friday, end of this weekend, this system is going to merge together and eventually develop a huge storm off the Northeast Coast. All right, so let's walk you through the map. So by... Now, that, now this is a, by Wednesday morning, this starts to really start to cr get cranking now as the cold air is actually gonna be, arrive just a tad bit sooner in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I'm no, not really expecting any severe weather in, in Dallas, but just southeast, there is a slight chance of severe weather for uh, parts of uh, you know Waco, San Antonio, into Houston. But the main story this week is all the rain for the deep south as this starts to really crank and starts to have a severe weather aspect of it for it to it. And if we take a look at the latest uh, storm prediction center, it's got a slight risk of those severe storms. Now this would be for Tuesday afternoon, uh, March 3rd for those areas for uh, Southeast Texas. And then as it moves, moves on to the East by Wednesday, we have another zone they isolated for a slight risk of severe weather which would include hail, uh, high winds, and an isolated tornado threat for uh, d the deep south and with Louisiana into uh, Mississippi. Now, if we take you through into Thursday, that severe weather starts to feed into parts of Georgia, into the panhandle of Florida, going into South Carolina. So if we take you look th look at the surface map, on Wednesday, Wednesday at midnight, it has that low pressure now down to 1,004 millibar, it starts to really start to get in his act together and still dump in a lot of heavy rain. So it's going to be, you know, two to four, uh, four to six inches in spots of heavy rain from this system. So the severe weather aspect and including a heavy rain aspect. And you see this other developing low pressure system up, up north. So, but by, by Friday at midnight, now this low pressure is off the coast of uh, South Carolina and it starts to really start to get in it, get in his act together. So yeah, let me take, make you aware of this low pressure here to the Northeast. So as these systems will try to uh, come together, it'll uh, deepen this low pressure with these isobars. Now this is again, midnight on Friday. And if we take you out another frame, now what's gonna happen basically is the EPO is gonna allow this, you notice it starts to dip by about March 5th, March 6th. It's actually gonna go negative in a couple deviation points. This may be enough to draw this system north as the Arctic Oscillation dips a little bit uh, further south because it's been highly positive uh, the, the majority of the winter. So we're gonna see a little bit of a dip. So it's it gonna, should be enough to allow this system and pull it northward. If we take it out another frame, by Friday, 12 hours later, now it starts to deepen from 1,002 to 996 millibars. And as, these, as the system starts to really crank, pulling in some of that colder air aloft from these cold core systems, we've got some snow breaking out in, into the northeast. But if we take you out another frame, on a 24-hour period, it essentially goes from a thousand four millibar to a 997. And so that would basically imply 
uh, a bomb cyclone is taking place because within a 24-hour pe period, uh, the actual definition, if it drops 24 millibars in a 24-hour period, a, a, a bomb cyclone essentially would take place. Now, what basically all that really means is uh, we've got a cold core within this system and uh, a, heavy, a heavy wind aspect of it too. And as this brings down that colder air aloft, it's snow is going to break out into the northeast. Now let's zoom into this system. And so this is, the, this is by uh, midnight on s Saturday night now. Now we're down to a 977. And if this, of course, it all depends on the track of this uh, developing low pressure system as it gets closer to the coast. But you can see these feeder bands pushing inland. And it would tra tra transfer over to snow and dump some heavy snow at times in parts of um, you know Vermont, New Hampshire, into Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut. So we have to. It all depends on the actual track of this low pressure system. Of course, this is now uh, six days out, but the entire system, the last day or two, has been slowing down and pushing further south. So. It's on the it's on the path that it's it is starting cor to correct. Uh, the last two days, it was this storm system was well off the coast, and with every update, it's pushing it further and further inland as the main system down south has has tend to slowed. So, if we take a look at the the, the next uh, over the 40, 40 hour period. So we essentially go from in 40 hours, we would drop from 1,004 millibar to a 962. That's essentially 40 millibars close to it within a 40 hour period. And that would classify as a, a super bomb cyclone. So this is a pretty exceptional system developing. If this were to take place, that would dump a lot of uh, snow into the New England region. So we have to really pay attention uh, from this storm and not just a, a snow aspect to it, but a, a heavy wind aspect of it too, as well. So these would be Saturday, Saturday night, uh, wind gust and knots. And these are pretty impressive from 45 to 50 knots. And that's, that would essentially equate to, you know, 55 to 60 mile per hour wind gust and a good chunk of the region of Pennsylvania and New York and all of the new England coast. So we, we really have to pay attention uh, to this system, the, the latest track, you know, as this system develops. But if this track were to take place, it would dump some impressive snow amounts and in places that we have not seen much snow, unfortunately, um, all winter by, by the coast. And so, especially into like places like Boston, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, some pretty good, pretty good hefty snow amounts. So of course it all depends on this, this track and I'll be tracking this uh, throughout the week. But if this were to take place, it would dump, you know, six to 12, if not over a foot of snow in spots. But of course it all depends on this uh, developing system. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. So we've got a lot to talk about this week with this severe weather aspect down for the deep South and this developing bomb cyclone as it really starts to deepen over a 40 millibar uh, low pressure system drop in a 40 hour time frame from essentially you know Friday into S Sunday morning. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, definitely share with your friends on uh, social media that are gonna be impacted uh, from these storms this week as it's an active week ahead. Uh, please like this video and definitely subscribe to my channel and catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.